So on last night's daily show, I hinted at someone that we will be interviewing. It's the first time actually on the daily show, of course, and on our channel as an exclusive interview. I've been very excited about this one. Been trying for quite some time, waiting for the correct time to do it. Um, when there's opportunity to, to to chat and catch up, and I think this is the perfect time to do so. Uh, we got have limited overs captain with us today, Tim Babavuma, and we are very excited about this one. And I know you guys will be too. We will be catching up with him, seeing how he's doing, seeing how it is in New Zealand, of course, preparing for the test match, but also catch up with him on a couple of other stuff too. So I'm excited about this one. I hope you guys are too. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. I'm really excited about this. Don't forget to smash the like button, comment, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell for all future videos as well. Those things you have to do as well as subscribe to Cricket Fanatics Magazine Monthly. Every issue is 100% free, straight into your inbox every single month. Go to the link in the description to get hold of that. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome to Clicker Fanatics Magazine. Uh, this is your daily show exclusive interview. I'm your host, Khalil Maiden. This is my co-host Aditya. And we are by Tem with Temba Bavuma today on today's show. Really excited about this. Looking forward to it. Um, how are you doing, Temba? How's things? How's quarantine being? You know, the flight, everything, getting to New Zealand, obviously from bubble to bubble, then getting small little breaks in between. But how's everything been on your side? How are you settling in? Yeah, I think let me start by greeting. Um, I hope you guys are good. Cardi, the teacher. Um, thanks for having me on your show. Uh, New Zealand, New Zealand has been has been interesting. Um, obviously, we came um, here a couple, probably just just around a week, um, and we had to serve our quarantine time. Um, and I guess that. I think for most of us, we use that to kind of adjust our bodies to to the different time zones here. Um, some guys have adjusted quite well. Some 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 other guys like myself are still struggling. Um, but yeah, things have been good. Um, last time I was here in New Zealand was 2017 or 18. Um, it was a good to a tough cricket. So we look forward to the challenge and experience again. And when it comes to switching to different uh, formats, of course. You know, you have to constantly switch between T20s, ODIs, and then as well, tests. How do you pre prepare yourself mentally and also for yourself as a captain, you know, because you go from being limited overs captain to vice captain in the tests. Um, what is that like and how is that experience like? Yeah, I think yeah, I think that's probably the challenge, you know, with so much cricket that's happening is us being able to adjust our skills. To, to the different format, um, to the different demands and challenges of the formats. Um, I think the biggest, I mean, you've said it there, the biggest adjustment is more from a mental point of view. Um, obviously, understanding with red ball cricket, you know, as a batsman, you're trying to, trying to bat time, you're trying to occupy the crease, um, you're trying to execute your skills for, for a longer period of time. So, you know, it's, it's getting your mind, I guess, accustomed to all of that. Um, and understanding that you're going to be spending long days out in the field. From a from a captaincy point of view, it's it's it does become a bit of a breath a breath of fresh air um, coming into the test side, knowing that you you're not the captain. Um, guys are not you know necessarily looking at you to to kind of lead the way. But I think you know being one of the the senior players within the team. Um, that expectation is there in terms of helping drive drive the team in the right direction. Um, but I guess it's a bit easier in that it doesn't come with the tag of being the captain. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that you as a senior player within the test side as well as a captain of the limited oversight, keeping everybody motivated is, is obviously very very challenging with everything that's been going on in South Africa recently. But I want to talk about particularly the improvements in the team. Uh, 
like specifically the way you guys have improved your batting over the last two years or so, you could say, um, everything's increased, like with regards to your approach to spin, your approach to different variations, etc. The way you, your approach has been within the, the limited overs format as well. We can see that the entire energy and attitude of the team has changed. Can you speak to me about that journey and, and what that journey has been like, how you guys got on track to where you are right now? Yeah, I agree with you. I think the biggest the biggest change and biggest focus from us as a building group was our ability to play on slow wickets, on turning wickets. Um, we haven't really been known to be to be to be a team that's been able to dominate in those conditions. Um, so I mean, probably about two three years, um, knowing that the T Twenty World Cup was going to be, I guess then it was India, and then it got moved to Dubai. Um, also, test players on the subcontinent. We knew we had to um, up our skills there. Um, the coach was quite, he was quite instrumental in that, if I could say, um, challenging the batters, um, getting the guys to expand their games, um, effectively just up the skill. And I think that's that's really shown um, in our batting displays of late. Uh, I think the other thing as well that we keep challenging ourselves that we that we pride ourselves as batters is is getting those big scores um and i think that's probably something that stood out um that stood out in our losses against india is guys going going and getting big big scores big hundreds to really win the game um for, for the team so yeah i think there'd be massive improvements um i think we've upped our game but i mean as as we are as cricketers, as as selfish as we are, we're always going to look for more. We're always going to look to find ways to raise that bar. Uh, Temba, we were talking to Ryan Rickleton the other day, and he was quite in awe of uh, the relaxed manner in which uh, you approach some pretty high-pressure innings against India in the recently concluded Test Series. Um, you've had a phenomenal year in Test cricket. so. My question is, what has been, uh, what has been your secret to really absorbing pressure and coming out victorious, particularly in those innings at uh, the Wanderers and uh, at the Newlands? Yeah, it's a hard one to answer. Um, I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a secret per se. Um, I think, I think playing at the World Cup was quite, was quite big for me in the sense that. You know, albeit it was T20 cricket, but it really felt like every day, you know, we were we were under pressure. Every day we had to play our best cricket, and every day you had to find yourself to to get yourself into the right mental state. Um, to first of all lead the team, um, but secondly also to to perform your to perform your your role. And I think from a mental point of view, you know, coming from the World Cup, I've I've kind of moved moved forward with that with that mental experience, understanding what it is being in pressure, um, remembering, you know, the things that I did that allowed me to, I guess, be able to execute my role. And I've tried to carry that on um, from, from, from that experience. I think, you know, playing in, in pressure moments, I think it also, it also is, a, is a character thing. Um, I guess for me, I I I pride myself um, in those situations. Um, I'm always someone who wants to contribute towards the team. Um, I'm always someone who wants to, I guess, make the play. You know, whether it's with the bat or whether it's within the field. Um, and I guess those situations bring 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 the best out of me. Um, from a calmness point of view, I guess it's. It's always trying to be clear as to what you're trying to do um, from a technical point of view, from a, from a game plan, from a strategy point of view, and then trusting that you can be able to execute that in that pressure moment. Um, but yeah, I don't think, I don't think there's, a, there's a secret to it, no. Temba, as a captain, are, are you more instinctive or are you more data driven, or is it a combination of both? 
what's your approach like in T20 cricket and ODI cricket? I think it's a bit of both. Um, I think probably lean a bit more on the instinctive side. Um, T20 cricket, things change very quickly. Um, you could plan you could plan that you want to bowl a certain ball at a certain time and then things just change. So you have to be able to, I mean, make decisions on on your feet. Um, you have to be engaged within the game. You don't want to miss any tricks. Um, but yeah, probably more more on the instinctive side. But also, I think understanding understanding your players, understanding your bowlers, that helps you quite a lot. You know, you try you try use your bowlers. Now I'm talking when you're on the field. You try use your bowlers in terms of their strengths. Um, I think that gives them the best opportunity to to succeed and or execute that skill. I think it's something that I've noticed as well about your captaincy. Uh, you th people are, are always known to compare. <laughs> That's just how things are in, in, in the world. Uh, people are always trying to compare things. I'm not going to compare you to, to anybody locally, but there are, I'm not going to mention specific names, but there are certain captains that we see, they kind of look like they're working off a piece of paper. They're going, you know, to a certain rhythm or they have a certain thing in their head of which order they're going to bowl. They really sussed out the conditions, etc. But with you, what I've noticed with you and what I appreciate so much about your captaincy is your ability to change things and risk things, like do things differently if it, if the situation allows it. Can you speak about how you got there? I know it obviously it's experience, but mm. I mean, well, what makes you decide, you know, wait, maybe we should go with Dwayne in this situation, maybe not maybe Dwan or maybe not go with KG in this situation. Let's try maybe Lungi. Um, what makes yeah. you decide on those factors and, and think on your feet like that? Yeah, I think I think probably the instinctive side of things. Um, but I think also being engaged in the game, you know, once you engage in the game, you kind of you kind of keep the flow of the game. Um, you don't let the game run away from you. Um, and I think that allows you to be able to make decisions based on how you see the game panning out. Um, you obviously can never plan for what's going to happen in 10 or 15 or 20 overs time. You know, it's, it's, it's most of the time it's within this period, within this five to 10 overs, what you think is needed. Um, and you try and make sure that you dominate, you dominate that period. Um, it's a hard question, but I think, yeah, in, instinct, I think is, 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 is the most important one. I trust, I trust my gut feeling and I know I've, I make calls. I've made calls that go against the norm. Um, and I mean, we all know once you start doing that, you know, you're always gonna, you're always gonna get criticism from people, but I think you gotta, you gotta back what you know. Um, you gotta back what is, that, what, 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 what your body or what your, your mind is telling you. Um, because I think by you doing that, that allows you to be consistent. So you, if, if, if you're making the wrong des decisions, it's easier for you to kind of rectify it um, versus if you're listening to everyone out there on the field or you're listening to the general public telling you that this is how you should do things, then you never really get to understand um, the type of person you are. You never really get to understand why you make certain decisions. Um, and I think from a captaincy point of view, I don't have a lot of experience from a captaincy point of view. Um, I got opportunity to captain, I think 2018 or 19 with the Lions um, through coach Enoch. And we were quite, I won't say fortunate, but we we had a lot of success. We had good success um, for the two years that we were there. And I think in that two years, um, those, experience, those experiences um, have served me well. So anytime, you know, I feel like I'm under pressure or I have to make a decision, I always think back at that. Um, and whatever decision that I make, I I back it hundred percent and am willing to take responsibility for whatever consequence consequence comes from it. Timbo, are there any captains you've looked up to for the their strategic acumen or perhaps their man management acumen? I mean, I can look back at my days playing for the High Fault Lions. Well, it's the Imperial Lions now. 
Um, and I think under the captains that I played under, I guess because I was someone who was very um, observing, always someone who was trying to learn, I tried to take a little bit out of the captains that I played under. Um, I played under a guy like Alviro, who who was the type of cricketer who you know who wanted to be the main guy, um, who led from the front. Um, I played under Stephen Cook, Neil McKenzie, quite similar guys who were a lot more um, knowledgeable about the game. Um, they kind of knew what to do in certain situations. Um, played under a guy like Tami Tzolegile, who I think tactically, you know, I learned I learned quite a lot from him. Um, I take a guy like Faf as well. Obviously, when I joined the team, you know, Faf was quite... In terms of managing the guys, um, that was quite big with him. Um, he was quite big in terms of culture within the team and making sure that the environment was conducive for, for everyone. So I guess through all those experiences, I've kind of taken bits and pieces from from, from those captains um, with probably without even me knowing. Um, and I've kind of molded myself around around all of that. But I think the biggest thing for me, and I've said it, is is to back the little voice that is inside that is inside me. You you mentioned Coach Enoch earlier on um, the, your time over there with him. We interviewed him recently, actually, on the channel as well. Um, he just cleared up a couple of things about his future. And the one thing I get whenever I speak to him is he, he does things differently. He thinks differently about cricket to what we normally will we'll normally see or experience. So um, can you tell me about your experience under him? How is he different to other coaches when it comes to the way he thinks about the game? Yeah, he's he's quite unique um, in his ways. Um, he's more not a, not big on technical aspect of the game, um, but he's more from a mental side, um, a big a big visionary. Um, you know, he likes his he likes his systems. Um, he likes his structure. He loves Barcelona, so I think he kind of takes a lot from that. Um, but he challenges, he challenges, he challenges the guys um, to always, to always keep getting better, um, to strive for, to strive for the best. Um, and I really enjoyed working, work, working with Coach Enoch. Um, but yeah, he's quite he's quite unique um, in his in his coaching philosophy. Uh, Temba, all the all the players that have played under you speak very highly of your leadership, and I'm interested in uh, the man management aspect of it a little bit. So, a large part of captaincy is obviously getting the best out of your players, and. Aidan Markham, for, in, for instance, we all know that he's prodigiously talented, but he hasn't been able to crack the ODI template just yet. So what do you do to bring out the best in him? Yeah, I think I think that's that's probably the biggest challenge as a captain is that for me, I mean, it's all about inspiring guys to to play their best, but also to to play for the team. Um, you know, international sports is it's quite selfish. Um but I think once you have a situation where eleven guys are fighting for each other, you know that that goes a long way in terms of the team's team's performance. Um, I'm not a guy that that speaks a lot. Um, I'm sure, you guys would have picked picked that up. But I think, you know, if 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 I do feel the need um, in kind of getting into a player's space, um, trying to understand where he's at how I can help him, um, I'll definitely do that. I'll definitely go out of my way um, to try get the best out of him. Um, and I think it's also just giving players that feeling, that genuine feeling that, that you back them. Um, I always tell the guys, if you're here playing, if you're here in the, in the squad, you know, whether, whether you're not in the starting 11, but you're in the squad, then you must trust and believe that you're good enough um, to play for this team. And that you're good enough to win a game um, when it's your day, and it's and and it's also to make sure that the other guys also believe that um, a guy like Aiden, I don't like speaking about about individual players, but like you said, you know, Aiden is a 
is a superb talent. Um, we think of guys like A.B. De Villiers who, who've left us. And I mean, you look at currently the guys who could, you know, become the A.B. De Villiers of, of this generation. Aiden is, gen- is definitely one of those guys. Um, and I guess for him, it's it's a matter of time. I mean, we've all we've all kind of gone through it, um, where you're trying to figure out your game. You figure out your game maybe in one format, and then maybe the other format um, takes takes a hit. And I think he's probably in that space. Um, if you look at how his T20 game has grown so massively, you know, um, maybe that's maybe affected his other formats. Um, but I mean, for us within the team, there's no, there's no concern, you know. When it comes to to Aiden, we know he's good enough. We we support we support him in terms of, you know, his his lean run of form. Um, but we know, you know, in terms of the talent, in terms of the potential, in terms of the temperament, it's almost a matter of time until he he sets the world alight in all the formats. Because that's something that I would also like to know is there's, there's been some criticism from fans and even I would say even for myself with the way transition has happened in South African cricket over the last couple of years. Like we, um, I, f- I feel maybe that we didn't uh, take advantage of those experienced guys in the team when they were all there to bring the youngsters maybe into the, into the setup faster or quicker. But that's always going to be some sort of criticism from people that are not in the setup themselves. So... It's easy for us to sit on the couch and and and, and criticize it, at the way things are done, but I want to ask you now because it's a perfect opportunity now as well for for newer guys to come into the side and learn from the experienced guys. Yourself, Dean, um, now Russ is becoming one of those guys as well now with game time because he's always been experienced with regards to domestic cricket and or maybe you can say with his age as well, KG and all of those guys as well in the team. What do you consider to be a a, a good environment for youngsters to come into, um, and how much conversation do you have with the coach on on creating an environment that makes it easier for these guys to to settle in? Yeah, look, I think the last couple of months, or not couple of months, um, 12, 18 months. I mean, there's been a large, a large focus um, amongst the the senior guys, the guys who've been around a bit longer, um, and also the understanding that. You know, we have to step up a lot more, not just from a performance point of view, but in terms of cultivating the culture that we would like, um, the environment that we would like, an environment that allows young guys to come in, um, seem- seamlessly transition within within the team, but then also understand that, you know, our, our standards of excellence, we don't compromise on that. And the only way you can you know, encourage excellence is for your seniors to to live up to that. Um, and I think you also accept accept the fact that young guys coming in at, into international cricket, you almost give them a leeway. You understand that it's going to take them a couple of games to kind of get accustomed to to the standard, to the intensity of international cricket. But while that is happening, it's important that the senior players, the guys who have been around perform in such a manner that it almost carries those younger guys. Um, and I mean, those are conversations that happen, you know, on a daily within within our team, whether it's the test format, whether it's the ODI format. Um, we're always challenging each other um, to put in those big performances. It doesn't always happen, um, and that we accept, but that's what we that's what we strive for. Uh, Temba, will we see you play any of any of the leagues, the IPL or the Big Bash, maybe at some point? It would be nice. Um, it would be nice um, being involved. Big Bash, I think, is a bit hard. Um, obviously, considering our our schedule and it clashes with our test test cricket and our local domestic um, IPL, obviously, that's an opportunity for all of us. Um, but yeah, it would be nice to 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 get involved there. It would be nice to be at that stage, um, have the opportunity to experience that type of pressure. I've always enjoyed playing playing in India. Um, I've enjoyed the fans. Um, 
I enjoy the the aggression that the, that the Indian players show out on the field as well as their skill. So yeah, the opportunity presents itself whenever it is. Um, I'll definitely be looking to grab it with both hands. So finally, for me, uh, I just want to know about the actual this series right now. You guys' preparation for it, I, um, how you guys are feeling, the focus in the camp, and also your um, preparation. You because you have you probably have the ability to be able to compartmentalize your your focus. You know, to make make sure that you focus on this because you come back and then it's again white ball cricket. So um, just about the rest of the season, your your, your aims, your goals, and and how you're going to this. Uh, what are your personal goals and, of course, for the team as well? So from a personal point of view, um, not to disappoint you guys, but I'm not someone that sets personal goals or anything like that. Um, I think I've learned over the years to try to take things um, game by game, day by day, day by day. Um, and not to be philosophical about it, but it's just to enjoy the experiences Um that I have playing for playing for the South Africa. I think having seen the senior players who have stepped away, guys who I came in when I came in within the team, your Hashim Amlas, your Abi de Villiers, I think that kind of gave me a real sense of how it can be your moment now, but a time will come where you have to go and another guy comes in and takes your takes your spot. So for me it's about enjoying that time. Um and really not taking it for granted. From a team point of view, I think, you know, there's obviously a lot of confidence that is brewing amongst us as a team um, from our performances back home against India. I think we'll take that confidence, we'll take whatever momentum, we'll take whatever learnings um, that, that we got from that series. But then it's also to understand that here in New Zealand is a different, will be a different challenge. Um, for guys who played here in New Zealand, we know that New Zealand are no, are no walkover. Um, they're not the number one test team. Um, they didn't win the test championship by, by, by mistake. You know, um, we're really going to have to be on top of our game. And I think the last couple of days where we've been training, it's all about adjusting to these conditions. Um, adjusting our plans um, to make sure that we can be successful. So, yeah, it's going to be, I think as always, Test Cricket, is, it's always eventful. Um, we do, it's going to be an eventful couple of weeks. And obviously our aim is to be on the, on the, good, on, on the good side of the, of the result. I, I, I want to ask you, um, yeah, over the years, what's been your, your favorite test innings, the one that you hold in, in highest regard? Favorite test innings? Uh, but I think people obviously expect me to say um, Newlands against, against England. I think the one for me that sticks out is actually here in um, New Zealand. We played at Wellington. Um, and I think we, I think we were about 90 for, 90 for six, uh, where Quinny and I kind of started getting a partnership going. But I think for me, if, if, if thinking back the night before, um, I think I probably slept like one or two hours, um, before, before the day, um, I was I was sick, but I never told I never told anyone. I never told the the, the team doctor or even our team manager, um, because I really wanted to play. I didn't want to give an excuse um, to to not to play. And I think from a mental point of view, um, I had to fight myself. I had to dig deep, um, and then going into a situation where we're ninety for six, we way behind the game. Um, I think I ended up getting 90, missed another 100, ended up getting 90. Um, but I think just just in terms of betting with Queenie, getting the team into into a, a strong position, um, but also overcoming those those inner battles. Um, yeah, for me, that's a, that's an innings that that sticks out for me. 
Okay, Temba, thanks a lot for giving us your time. And we know that it's that it was difficult to to get this obviously organized with with you guys being in New Zealand. But thanks a lot for giving us your time and and, and chatting to us and giving us some amazing insight into the rest of your your time um, that you'll be overseas now and obviously coming back and all the series that are coming up. We're really excited to see you guys perform and good luck for the series. Good luck for the the local series as well when you come back to. And I wish you guys and all the best to the team as well. To the guys that are watching us, um, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to click that notification bell um, for all future videos as well. There's the button. You just can click on it and the notification bell. As well as subscribe to Cricket Fanatics Magazine monthly. The link is on the screen. Every single issue is 100% free. Straight in your inbox every single month. Themed for your liking. So go ahead and download this and you'll get all back issues free as well. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. And thanks a lot, Temba, for coming on the show. We'll see you guys again later on for another daily show fan Q&A session. Take care.